good to be with you. Your mother church, Alexandria Presbyterian Church, is very happy, very encouraged to see what God is doing at One Voice Fellowship. It's my privilege tonight to talk about the work of elders in the church. And so I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. This is written by an elder, an apostle, Peter. We know about Peter a little bit, don't we? One of the disciples of Jesus. He's writing this about 30 years after his time with Jesus. He's had a chance to watch the church of Jesus Christ grow. And this is what he says. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, would you please help us to understand these words? Give us the grace to obey these truths. And may we see Jesus as the answer to everything that we need now. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm here tonight to talk about the work of shepherds, elders. Jesus told Peter and his disciples, feed my sheep. Who are his sheep? You. Me. All who follow Jesus are his sheep. Feed my sheep. And so we see through the life of Peter, a man where the gospel changed him completely from the inside out. You remember Peter's biggest failure? What was his biggest failure? Denying that he even knew Jesus Christ the night before Jesus' death. How does a man go from that low have you been low? Have you been so low that you gave up hope that God could ever love you, that God could ever use you? <clears throat> Don't give up hope. Look what Jesus did for Peter. He raised him up. He made him a leader in the church. Peter was transformed by the gospel. As I said earlier, he wrote this book three decades after his failure you don't know what God can do with your life after you give your life to Christ and you confess your sins and you trust in Jesus you don't know what God can do with your life he can do great things Amen. that you don't even see that you can't even think about right now we see that through Peter he said Peter I want you to give your life to feeding my sheep so one of the lessons that we're looking at tonight is feeding the sheep of Jesus takes place in community, like you're having a one-voice fellowship. 
like you have when you gather for study, like you have when you gather for dinner every Sunday night, like you have when you gather in the sanctuary to worship, feeding God's people, shepherding takes place when God's people are together. You see, it doesn't happen when we're separated. It doesn't happen when we go off on our own. A lot of people try to do that. A lot of people try to live the Christian life by themselves. That doesn't work. That's not how Jesus intended. So we're talking about shepherding the flock of God. We think about being a part of a community. We think about the task of elders especially. So I'm going to go back to those words of Peter. So I exhort the elders among you. Next week you're going to vote on three elders called by God. You know who calls elders? Not congregations. God calls elders. Congregations vote. Congregations look at the men that are called by God and they say, we believe that these men are called by God to lead us, to shepherd this congregation. Next week, you're going to have an opportunity to do that as a congregation. What an exciting, exciting time in the life of One Voice Fellowship. Feeding the congregation. Peter says, as a fellow elder, I'm impressed that Peter doesn't say, I'm the apostle. I've got this connection with Jesus that none of you have, so you better listen up. Peter doesn't say that, does he? He doesn't lord it over the people. He comes alongside of the people. And that's what good elders do. That's important. To lead with humility. We don't know it all. The only things that we know, we've been taught by Christ. And anybody who's taught by Christ will be a humble person. Pride. Pride is of the devil. Humility is of Jesus. So we see Peter saying, as a fellow elder, somebody who witnessed Christ's suffering, it had to be the most painful time in his life. That night, if he could only have that night back. But he couldn't, could he? You ever thought about that? If I could just have that day back. If I could have that week back. If I could have that year back where I made a lot of bad decisions. You ever struggle with that? Most of us do. Jesus can redeem that. Jesus knows how to make good come from that. But we have to look up to him. We have to believe that he knows how to redeem that. That's what he did with Peter. He said, Peter, you have not so messed up your life that I can't use you. Do you know that's true of you? That's true of me. I have not so messed up my life. You have not so messed up your life that Jesus cannot use you. But we have to look to Jesus for forgiveness. We have to look to Jesus to see his beauty, his loveliness. Oh, how he loves us. It's important for elders to believe that. Where are, where are these elders? I'm looking around the room. Yeah, it's important to believe that. Jesus can use you. Jesus wants to use you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Let his love continue to grow in your soul. And so you can shepherd. What does it mean to shepherd? Well, to take care of the sheep. To take care of these people and the people that Jesus is going to continue to send to One Voice Fellowship. Watch over them care for them, feed them God's word, protect them from the enemy because the enemy is always trying to snatch 
the sheep. You know, it's a lot easier for the enemy to snatch the sheep when the sheep are not with the flock. Is that right? Stay with the flock. Stay under the shepherd's care. Stay under the shepherd's watch. And you will be better protected. Shepherding is the spiritual feeding and oversight of the sheep. The sheep of Jesus. Shepherd the flock of God under your care. Under the care of the elders of the church. Under the care of the headship of Jesus Christ. Under your charge. People with names and faces and needs like you. It's important that you let your elders know what your needs are. It's important that you tell your elders how they can pray for you. Otherwise, how would they know? It's important for you to know that you can go to your elders. You can go to your pastors, but you can go to your elders and say, would you please watch over my soul? I need someone to do that. The elder, the overseer, the Bible uses those words the same. An elder is somebody who oversees. The word elder, you know what the word elder in the Bible means? The gray-haired one. You see, I'm an elder. What does that mean? Well, hopefully it's a man who hasn't lived enough life. He's got some wisdom. He doesn't just give the book answer. He gives the answer of the word of God as it's been worked in his life. A lot of lessons that elders learn are through their own mistakes, through their own failures, growing in grace. God uses that. The word elder refers to the man. Overseer refers to the work that the man does. He oversees, he watches over the flock. That makes sense, right? He's watching over. It's a beautiful thing when elders do that. The Lord has his sheep and his flocks and the Lord chooses exactly where to place his sheep and where to place the elders over the sheep. The elders that you're going to elect next Sunday night aren't there by chance. It, they didn't just happen to show up. God placed those elders here in this church at One Voice Fellowship. God placed the sheep, every one of the sheep here. You know that you're here because God put you here. He put you here so that you would be fed, that you would learn the word of God, that you would grow in grace. Isn't that comforting to know that the God who made you has a master plan for your life? Isn't that comforting? Nothing's by chance. So shepherd the flock teach the flock, listen to the flock, pray for the flock. And how do you pray for your elders? Do you know you need to pray for your elders? Pray that God would give them wisdom. Pray that God would give them humility to always be listening to Jesus, not going off on their own, not doing their own ideas, Pray for your elders that God would protect them, that God would protect their families. Pray for your elders that God would protect their souls, that they would not be snared by the enemy. That's one of the most important things you can do is to pray for your leaders. A healthy church prays for their leaders often as they pray for their sheep. Sheep. I'm told that among the shepherds in the Middle East, the sheep all have names. Who knew? The sheep have names. You say, well, they're just sheep. 
Why does a sheep need a name? I don't know. I guess they do. So when the shepherd calls the sheep, the sheep come. The sheep respond to their name. You have names. Your name is important. Your name is important to God. If God named the very stars in the universe, if God gave names to the stars, if God and shepherds give names to the sheep, how important do you think your name is to God? How important do you think your life is to Jesus? You matter to him. Your church is going to be led by these elders. Your church is going to be led by your pastors. Look what God has already done through your church, through your pastor, Pastor Chris. Look what God has done in Pastor Chris's life. Look at what God is doing through Pastor Chris. Look what he's doing through soon to be Pastor Clement. This church is not here by accident. God planted this church. God called this church into existence. And God called you to be a part of this church. To his glory. Shepherds, the under shepherds who watch over the sheep, follow the shepherd who is the overseer of your souls. That's Jesus. Peter says, be an example be an example to the flock. That's an interesting word in, in the language of the Greek. To be an example in school, in school when you were learning how to write your letters, what would the teacher do? Write out on the whiteboard or the chalkboard or whatever? What does the teacher, when the teacher is teaching your letters, what does the teacher do? Write out the letter? And underneath, what do you do? You copy. That's what this word means. Copy your leaders. Are your leaders, are your pastors, are your elders perfect? No, none of us are. But your elders and your pastors are people that you ought to be able to say, look at their life and follow their life. Imitate their life. Copy how they pray. Copy how they listen and read God's word. Copy how they listen to people. You know, there aren't a, have you noticed that there aren't too many people that are really good listeners? Most people are better at talking than listening. Elders need to be good listeners. They need to listen closely to what you have to say, to your heart. They need to listen. They need to, they need to copy how they pray, copy how they listen, copy how they love. Copy how they love you. And then go love other people as you've been loved. Is there love by the shepherd Jesus? This is what Peter's saying. Be an example. Be an example, elders, be an example of what it means to repent, to confess your sins daily. Be an example of what it means to believe the gospel and to grow in your faith. We have a, uh, we have a saying in our church. It actually comes from East Africa. A revival in East Africa back in the 1950s. Always repenting, always rejoicing in the gospel. That's a godly person. Always repenting. A spiritual leader is not somebody who's always looking at other people's sins. A spiritual leader is someone who first and foremost looks at their own sin. God, would you forgive me for my sin? I have to do that every day because I sin every day. And you do. 
God, would you show me? Would you show me when my mind is not thinking your thoughts? Would you show me when my words, my actions are not your words and your actions? Show me so I can be a man of love and faith. Always repenting, but always rejoicing in the gospel. You see, the, the man or the woman who repents rejoices because they know that there's forgiveness. Amen. If you know there's forgiveness, you can come clean. If you know that there's forgiveness, you can say, God, show me what's not right in my life. This is an elder. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Let me say in closing to the elders, we read these remarkable words. Listen to this. The day's coming when the chief, the chief shepherd, who's the chief shepherd? Jesus. Jesus. The day's coming when the chief shepherd is going to return, verse 4. He's going to come back. And when he appears you will receive the unfading crown of glory. It's a bit of a mystery, but we know that what that means is when Jesus returns to all elders who have been faithful to their charge, to their work, Jesus has a special reward, a special blessing because it's a hard work that elders do. It's an important work that elders do. And in some way, when Jesus returns, he's going to give this crown that he calls. He's going to give this crown of glory to his under shepherds. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like that day, but I know it's going to be good. And I want to be faithful to the end. That your elders will be faithful to the end. That your elders won't lose heart. That your elders won't give in to sin. That your elders won't give up. It can be discouraging. You can, you can get there, right? The things that we've talked about tonight. This is hard work. This is hard work for elders. But it's an important work. And that's why we pray for our elders. Jesus will bring the reward with him one day. That's up to him. But he tells us about it now. Elders, all I can tell you after Chris and I have been at the church, yeah, I've been at Alexandria Presbyterian Church 33 years. When I came to the church, our congregation was smaller than you. We were very small. Been there a long time. It's been very hard work. Many tears over many sorrowful things that have happened to the sheep. Many tears of joy. It's hard work though. John Calvin, you've heard of him? John Calvin was a man, a reformer, who trained a lot of ministers in a very violent time in Europe. Many of the pastors and the ministers that he trained were expected to live only six months before they would be killed. Six months. Can you imagine going to seminary to be trained as a pastor? knowing that you probably will only have six months to live until somebody comes and arrests you and somebody puts you to death because of what you represent of Jesus. Why would a man do that? Why would a man spend years of training for a ministry that may last six months? Because it's important work. Every day in that six month, feeding the flock of God, 
bringing people to Christ for salvation, seeing them grow up in their salvation, seeing people in heaven one day. Doesn't get any better than that. You share the love of Christ. And it's, you don't have to be an elder to do that. You share the love of Christ with people who don't know Jesus. And you'll spend eternity together in heaven. That's why you sacrifice. We're all, we're all called to sacrifice for Jesus. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We live one life. We're not here to live this life for ourselves. We're here to live this life for Jesus. Amen. So let's do this. Let's do this. But let's do this looking to Jesus. And I'm going to ask him right now. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, this is your church. These are your sheep. Next week, these are going to be your elders at One Voice Fellowship. Thank you for the work that you've done already. Lord, I thank you for the good work that you're doing at One Voice Fellowship. Would you continue to bring people into the kingdom of God through this church? Would you continue to grow the sheep in this church? Would you continue to protect the sheep here? Protect them from the enemy. God, protect them from pride. Protect them from laziness. Protect them from indifference. Give them gospel hearts each day more and more like Jesus. May this church pray for their elders. May this church pray for their pastors. May the pastors and the elders of this church pray for each of the sheep here. May they lay down their lives for the sheep here. For the glory of God, I pray in Jesus' name. Yeah.